The cell cycle of an animal cell refers to the different stages of the life cycle of that cell. Now for an animal cell, there are two main stages. We have the interphase and the M stage, also known as mitosis. Now mitosis is the process by which the cell actually divides into two identical cells and we're going to focus on that stage in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to discuss the process of the interphase or the stage known as interphase. Now interphase is the stage of the life cycle of the animal cell that prepares the cell for the process of cell division. Interphase is the longest stage of the life cycle of that cell and it takes up about 90% of the time. Now the reason it's so long is because interphase actually consists of three individual phases. We have the G1 phase, the S phase, as well as the G2 phase. Now, each one of these phases basically serves its own unique function. So, let's actually discuss each one of these individual phases that together make up our interphase. So, let's begin with the G1 phase. So, as soon as the cell divides, the cell enters the G1 phase and the G1 phase is known as the growth phase. So basically in this phase, our chromosome unwinds and uncoils into euchromatin and the euchromatin is used to produce RNA that is used to synthesize the proteins that are needed by the cell. And those proteins are used to synthesize the many organelles and the different types of cell machinery that are needed for the cell's survival. So the G1 phase is the phase where we produce the majority of the organelles and the proteins that are used by the cell and as a result the cell basically increases in size. In fact the cell doubles in size during the phase known as the G1 phase. Now, towards the end of the G1 phase is a checkpoint known as the restriction point. And if the conditions are favorable and if the requirements have been met by the, uh, by the cell, the cell can basically commit itself to the process of cell division by exiting the G1 phase and entering the next phase of interphase known as the S phase. However, what happens if the cell doesn't actually want to divide? What happens if the conditions are not favorable or if the requirements have not been met? In this case, the cell exits the G1 phase and it exits interphase entirely and it enters a completely different phase known as the G0 phase, which is the resting phase of the cell cycle. Now, some, sp uh, some cells spend very little time in the resting phase, in the G0 phase, because they need to continually divide. And some examples include skin cells, intestinal cells, as well as stomach cells. On the other hand, other, uh, other cells that spend their entire lifetime in the G0 phase, basically that means that our cells do not actually divide. And one example of a cell that doesn't actually divide and, spe and spends the majority of its time in the G0 phase, in the resting phase, is the nerve cell. Now, if the cell actually wants to, wants to divide, if the cell, if the conditions have been met, and if the conditions, uh, and if the requirements have been met, if the conditions are favorable, then the G1 phase goes into the S phase. So if the G1 phase is the growth phase of our cell cycle, then the S phase is basically the replication phase. In this phase, the cell also produces a small amount of proteins and organelles, but the majority of the resources of the cell basically focus on DNA replication. Now in human cells, all 46 individual chromosomes are actually replicated and the original chromosome and the replicated chromosome are joined together in a region known as the centromere which involves different types of proteins that assist in the joining process. 
So let's take a look at the following uh, at the following diagram. So at the beginning of S phase, we have individual original chromosomes, but as the S phase proceeds, we basically use the cell machinery to replicate our DNA molecule, the chromosomes. So each one of the 46 individual chromosomes in human cells are replicated and we produce the following two chromosomes, the original as well as the replicated. And we joined these two uh, chromosomes by using special proteins at a region known as the centromere found in this center location. Now, once we actually replicate the individual chromosomes, these individual chromosomes are now known as chromati uh, uh, chromatids. So at this point, the cell basically contains 46 original chromatids and 46 replicated chromatids to make a combined total of 92 chromatids. So at the end of S phase, our cell contains 92 chromatids in human cells. Now, once the S phase is, is completed, it goes on into the G2 phase. So the G2 phase is basically the phase of interphase that makes sure that the cell is fully prepared for the process of mitosis, for the process of cell division. So in this phase, our cell basically continues producing the proteins and the organelles that are needed by that cell. So once the chromosomes are replicated and the chromosome number is doubled, the cell enters the G2 phase. During this phase, the cell prepares for cell division by making sure it contains enough proteins and organelles. That means protein synthesis and organelle production continues in the G2 phase. Now, at the end of the G2 phase, just like the G1 phase contains a checkpoint, the G2 phase also contains a checkpoint at the end. At the checkpoint, the cell basically checks for the level or the concentration of a certain type of protein known as the mitosis promoting factor or MPF. MPF sometimes also stands for the maturation promoting factor. Now, if the concentration levels are high enough, the cell will basically exit the G2 phase and exits the interphase and enters the second stage known as the M stage. So as we'll see in the next lecture, this is the stage that consists of the process of mitosis, which is the process by which the cell basically divides and produces an identical daughter cell. Now, mitosis can be broken down into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, and the process by which the cell actually divides is known as cytokinesis, and we'll discuss that in the next lecture. So basically, the process of interphase is the first stage of the life cycle of an animal cell. Interphase consists of the G1 phase, the S phase, and the G2 phase. In the G1 phase, the cell basically grows in size because the majority of the proteins and, the, and organelles are synthesized within our cell. The S phase is basically the replication phase. This is when the cell actually replicates the DNA. Now the last phase, the G2 phase, this is the phase in which the cell basically makes, makes sure that the cell is prepared for the process of cell division. So the cell continues to synthesize the proteins as well as our organelles.